we got diesel, put the bale spike on. Just going up to the bays now to move the bales out of the way because we're closing at night with bales, stop people going in and nicking the picnic benches. Because there's a calendar girls photo shoot on this morning. Now, it has been raining heavily overnight and it's supposed to rain heavily until about 10 o'clock and we don't normally open to 10. So they're doing it out of hours because I think it's going to be a bit of a, um, a raunchy one, I think. Yeah, so the picnic area has got a little bit of flooding in it. I think we're going to have to move the picnic benches over to this area here and hope it dries up this week. Second field has just come into flower now, so we'll get into that this week and get a, a maze mown into it. But yeah, it's a bit wet. Typical British weather. So I'm in the sunflower field now, picking sunflowers to cover ladies' bits because they're doing this photo shoot kind of promotional video for a drama production of Calendar Girls in Northwich Theatre, I think. So I've never been asked before to go and find some sunflowers big enough to cover boobs. So what, what are you doing then? Are you okay. filming this now? Yeah. yeah. Right, so we are doing a production of the Calendar Girls and today we are at the uh, Sunflower Maze and we're going to get our kit off to raise lots of money for charity. That's our ultimate aim. So how can people find you? Okay, they can find us on Facebook, Salt and Pepper Productions. Um, we've got a website also. Email me at director at saltandpepperproductions.co.uk the Grange Theatre website where tickets are available because our show's on November. She's 24th. done this before, hasn't she? <laughs> um, so you can find us on the Grange Theatre website. Yeah. You can find us, my gosh, where else can you find us? Twitter. In a field. In a, <laughs> you can find us. So Twitter, Salt and Pepper Productions. Um, not yet, we're not up to TikTok and stuff like that just yet. We're a little bit too old for that. Um, They're all on Tinder though. <laughs> Swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, so you're going to do a little video as well today. Where are you going to put that? Facebook. Uh, Facebook. Right, yes, there you go. I'll be on Facebook, definitely. So I'll smile. Smile. <laughs> I'm not even in it. <laughs> <laughs> Just need a rainbow now. Why are you doing it in the rain? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jury picker on, and I can hear all <laughs> giggles coming from the other side of the hitch. So that was a bit random. Anyway, uh, I think Salt and Pepper Productions on Facebook, they're doing a Calendar Girls theatre thing in Northwich or Nanwich, Northwich, I think it is coming out soon. I think you can buy the tickets now, and it's all for charity as well. So it's for. Um, forgotten the names of the charity leukemia and for brain tumors but i can't remember the, the the brain tumor charity but yeah check it out on facebook anyway so they've come here they've got wet they're going to come back i think when it's sunny and get some more pictures because they're going to do a calendar as well to go with the production james's new digger's come and it's getting a quick itch electric quick itch put on it so the cab's lifted up look how good that is get it everything The steel now going in. It's lifted up now with this. Curl it back a bit. There we go. Beats lifting it by hand. to take it out and lift it back in because we put it in the first time we put resin on it the resin went off that quick and then when we lifted it up it was it was set so we had to take it down chip the resin off and go again so we're going to lift it in place now and then squirt the resin in second beam going up now This bucket was used the other day to move the grass clippings from Liverpool and Everton's football training academies. 
and look how much it's rusted because it's rained overnight. It shows you how much nitrogen is in the grass clippings and probably because they put loads of nitrogen on the grass. Rob's just here for some straw, but we're just checking how heavy it is because he... Is that enough? You don't want another? Okay, so what's that? Three ton? Nearly three ton there in six bales. So, seven bales. Rob's just having a go with a mini Merlot because he wants one. If anyone's watching and wants to sell him one, get yourself there and sell him one. Danny's here on the beast. I think this has got a straight through pipe actually. Because it's loud, you see. Can't really see, can you? Just still picking wheat up on the Merlot. Not a lot left now. He definitely wants a Merlot, you know he does. Get about two and a half ton of wheat in that bucket. Someone was asking me what the difference is between bales, why some of them are big square ones like this, and some of them are round. Basically, big square high density bales like these are a relatively modern invention, sort of the last 25 years maybe. Round bales were before that, and they, the round bales were the original big bales after the ones that you pick up, like we made the other week, what we call idiot bricks now. But round bales are still quite fashionable because if you put a net, a net wrap on them, they can live outside and they're kind of like a thatched roof. So you leave them outside and the rain just runs off them. And you can roll them about and put them in cow pens and roll them and different things like that. Or you can put them in mixers and it chops them up. These ones are a bit harder to move around and weigh a bit more. If you stack these outside, they get wet because the rain just soaks straight in. And that's why we use them hay caps if you're storing them outside. Whereas round bales in a net wrap, you can store outside without really getting any damage. But they're a bit of a pain on the slopey ground because they roll off when you're bailing them. And then also to move around when you put them on a trailer because they're all circles. You've got loads of dead space. You can't get as much on a trailer. And they're obviously dangerous because they can fall. There's different kinds of big bales as well. These are what we call quadrants, which is sort of made by class. But they're basically 120 wide, so the four foot wide. They're about just over two foot deep. Yeah, two and a half foot deep, I think. And eight foot long. They basically fit on a wagon perfectly. Five high to fit under motorway bridges. You can get some that are ever so slightly higher, but then sometimes you can't go five high, you've only got to go four. There's all sorts of different combinations, but the quadrants are sort of a standard size. And you have what they call a big Heston, which were the first to do it, which are now massy balers. And they're four foot by four foot square and eight foot long. But I think if you go four high with them, you're too high for bridges and three high, you don't get as much on. So it's a bit of a, everyone's different choice really, but these are kind of like, work well in Europe. Um, the, you can get quite a lot of density in them. Actually, yeah, there's another size of bell. You've got like what they call a mini Heston, which is, see how you fit two of them wide on a trailer? Well, you'd fit three wide on a trailer and the perfect squares. So they're sort of like that big, but they're quite unstable. And when you're unloading them off a trailer, they can like roll off the other side. So these are better because they're a bit flatter, you see. Yesterday's quiz question was, yes, slow burning banger ropes for scoring pigeons and crows, things like that. This is today's. What's that for? It's got a thread in the end of it. And it's like a tube, but it's got like a spiral inside. If you think you know, leave a comment below. It's a guy been today shooting pigeons. Got 200 on his own, single-handedly. So that's pretty good. That's another 200 less to eat everything. We're gonna have a quick look at the sweet corn anyway while I'm down here. I'm just amazed now. Just checking if the picnic uh, area is still flooded. And unfortunately, it is. Hopefully it'll dry up overnight. There is a little bit more rain forecast, but then it's gonna be dry then for the next sort of like week, hopefully. Sweet corn update. Nearly shoulder height, neck height. But we've got tassels, which means each one of them little tassels goes to a kernel, which is a grain, which is a yellow piece of sweet corn. And we've basically got sweet corns forming here. So they, they're a little bit like barley whiskers. They harvest daylight and feed the grain. So what we want now, we've obviously got plenty of moisture, but we want loads of sunshine now so that we basically get nice big cobs with nice juicy grains on them. 
looked pretty good to be fair. Third sunflower maze field is just next to them. And by the looks of this, we've nearly got flowers. Not really tall though. Could be a variety thing this year. I mean, they will still grow, but nowhere near as tall as they were the year before. The other thing is they're not as dense, so they're not fighting for light. So that's probably as well why they're not as high. They need to be sown quite fat, quite close together, compete for light, and then they'll, they'll sort of um, rise above each other. In fact, there's one out there. It's, uh, we don't want this ready for like three weeks because we've still not even gone onto that field yet with the mower. But yeah, there's one here that's uh, just about opening. Literally, they're all pointing bolts up to the sky, trying to find sunlight. If it was sunny, they'd be pointing that way. In the sorry, that way in the morning, this way in the afternoon. But because it's been it's been so dull for the last few days, they literally bolt up right like uh, like dinner plates. A bit weird. I think we've had about forty mil of rain. As you can see, we've got a flood in this sunflower field. This is the fourth sunflower field. It's physically got water, and that's where we've been digging at them drains as well. So we're a bit annoyed about that. I thought we'd solve that problem. That field though, still looking great. Massive heads on the flowers now as well. Quick water main update. If I get down, I don't know if you can see how much of a hole there is it now in the floor. It's sunk that badly. I might bring a spirit level and put it over it, but it's sunk about four inches. And it's a terrible bump in the road now. Danny's nearly got the rest of his wheat now. He's only got a little bit left in the back. This is the stuff we cut the other day. Pretty much dry now. That just needs sweeping out because we're probably gonna have to go to spring barley soon. Big pile to go for the dryer for conditioning. And we've also got a bit of wet stuff in the other shed. We're going to mix that with it and that's just emptying now i just probably need to move the combine so we've got a bit more room daddy what are you doing <laughs> what? It. feeding the pigeons i'll try it again now and i'll film it <laughs> look at that nice guns he's definitely december isn't he <laughs> from james's mini digger to our bigger digger it's about it for today We've now hit 21,000 subscribers, which is like huge. The next big landmark is obviously 30 or 50, but 100,000 you get a plaque off YouTube. So we won't want to enter the wall in the workshop. But thanks everyone that's watching. Don't forget there's a channel intro so that explains why I'm doing these videos and why we're over 500 days into them anyway. But thanks for all the new subscribers again. Don't forget if you're new, say where you're watching from. I'll um, See you all tomorrow when hopefully we can get combining again, but definitely we will be on Tuesday because the weather is supposed to be great on Tuesday. So if you want to watch another video, it's there. If you want to uh, subscribe, it's over here. And I've got a guest outro for you as well. So don't forget, send them on, on Instagram. It's Agri Contract on Instagram. And um, I'll see you tomorrow.